the Green Thinkers Academy. Hello everyone, myself Chandra Sinara and in this video I am going to tell you about the systematic taxonomy and biological classification of the organism. So let's start with the systematic. The term systematic derived from a Latin word systema that means the systematic arrangement of the organism. Basically, it is the scientific study of diversification as well as the revolutionary relationship of the organisms through time. The Swedish botanist Carl Linnaeus in the year 1735 first used this term systematics in his book System Natural. In biological science, systematics have various important scopes like it deals with the variation within the taxa as well as has determined various unique and similar characteristics of the organism. Not only that, it provides uh, naming and identification of the organism as well as it investigates the evolutionary relationship of the organism and also considered the environmental adaptation of the organism. Next, what is taxonomy? Taxonomy, basically the term taxonomy derived from two Greek words that is taxos means arrangement and nomos means law. So the taxonomy is basically the study of identifying, naming and classifying a group of organisms based on their shared characteristics. The father of modern taxonomy, Carl Linus, was first develop a linear classification system for categorizing and binomial nomenclature system for naming our living organism. There are some basic differences exist between the systematics and taxonomy. Like systematics is the study of relationship of the organism whereas taxonomy is a branch of systematics. Systematics is a scientific study of diversification of the organism whereas taxonomy deal with the classification of the organism. Systematics involves the evolutionary history of organism whereas taxonomy does not involve in it. On the other hand, taxonomy provides naming and classification of the organism whereas systematics along with the classification naming of the organism also incorporate the characteristic and phylogenetic studies of the organism. Taxonomy can be changed with further studies, but systematic cannot be changed with further studies. Next, come to the point, what is biological classifications? So basically, the biological classification is the arrangement of various living organisms into a particular group depending on their various similar and dissimilar characteristics. Now, the three most important terms used in biological classifications are taxonomic categories, taxonomic hierarchy, taxon or taxon. So, taxonomic category are several grouping levels of organisms in which closely related organisms are placed into a particular group and several similar groups together form a higher levels in this taxonomic classification. There are seven major taxonomic categories are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Later, domains are introduced as a taxonomic category in this taxonomic classification. Next, what is taxonomic hierarchy? Generally, it is a ascending and descending arrangement of our taxonomic category in which kingdom plays the higher taxonomic rank and species plays the lowest taxonomic rank. And as we go higher from species to kingdom, in each step, the similarities between organisms tend to decrease. Next, what is taxa? or in singular form taxis. Generally, it is a group of similar or genetically related organisms that classified as a unit and this unit is very much important in this biological classification systems. Adolf Meyer first proposed the term taxon for animals whereas HLM 
first propose the term taxon for plant. Now, next come to the description of our seven taxonomic categories in the taxonomic hierarchy. So, let's start with domains. Domains are the highest most taxonomic rank in this taxonomic hierarchy until it sorry it and does not used until 1990. Next to domains is kingdom. It was the highest most rank in the taxonomic hierarchy until the domains were introduced. And basically it is a group of closely related organisms. Next is phylum. It is more specific rank than taxonomy. Sorry, than kingdom. So, for example, in the kingdom Animalia, there are almost 35 phylums are present. Next to phylums is class. Class was considered as the highest most general rank until phylum were introduced this taxonomic hierarchy. In the kingdom Animalia, there are 108 different classes are present along with the class Mammalia. Next to the class is the rank order. It is more specific than the rank class and it is basically a group of closely related families and have some less similar characteristics among them. There are around 26 classes are sorry 26 orders are present in the class mammalia next to order is family it is more specific rank than order and it is a group of related genus and they have less similar characteristics compared to genus and species and in the uh, order carnivora there are about 12 different families are present next to it is genus it is a group of similar species and it is more specific rank than the family the next two genus is species it is basically a group of similar and generically related population that are reproductively isolated from other such group and this species placed as the lowest most rank in the taxonomic hierarchy and it is the most specific rank as well. So next come to the Whitaker five kingdom classification systems. The Whitaker in the year 1969 first developed a five kingdom classification systems in which he divide all the organism in five different kingdoms such as kingdom protista, kingdom bacteria or monera, kingdom plantae, kingdom animalia and kingdom fungi. Basically kingdom protista includes all eukaryotic organisms that are not plants, fungi or animal. Or on the other hand kingdom monera also considered as the kingdom of bacteria which encompasses all the prokaryotic organisms. Later in the year 2015, the kingdom protista further divided into other two different kingdoms. These are kingdom protozoa and kingdom chromista. After that, uh, three domain and six kingdom classification systems are arrived. In these cases, the kingdom monera are divided into two different domains that's the domain of archaea and domain of bacteria and rest of the four other kingdoms that is kingdom protista kingdom animalia kingdom anti and kingdom fungi are grouped under one single domain that is called the domain eukaryota now what the key sorry the domain Archaea evolved the kingdom Archaeobacteria, whereas the domain bacteria evolved the kingdom Eubacteria. 
basically the archaeobacteria are the adhesion bacteria and they are living in a extremely harsh environmental condition and their parasitic and pathogenic effect is still not observed on the other hand the eu bacteria are considered as the true bacteria in which they are living in everywhere on this earth surface and they, all the bacteria other than archaeobacteria are grouped under this eu bacteria category now come to the general classification of our kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia in case of kingdom plantae they are further divided into two different sub kingdoms that is cryptogamy means non flowering and non seed bearing plants and phanerogamy means flowering and seed bearing plants the cryptogamies are further divided into three different divisions that is thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta in case of thallophyta plant bodies are not well differentiated into stem root and leaf the examples of thallophyta are algae fungi and various kinds of lichens so next bryophyta in which they don't have any vascular tissues present in their body and they have some root like leaf like and stem like structure the examples of bryophyta are various kind of mosses next is thallophyta in which they have vascular tissues present in their body and their bodies are well differentiated into stem root and leaf the examples of pteridophyta are various kinds of ferns next the phanerogamy are for the divided into two different divisions that is angiosperms and gymnosperms Gymnosperms mean naked seed bearing plants like pinus and cycas and angiosperms are those plants who have seeds in their fruits and they are further divided into two different classes that is monocotyledon and dicotyledon monocotyledon means one seed at least the examples of monocotyledon are wheat rice etc and Dicotyledon means the two seeded leaf bearing plants. The examples are mangoes, peas, etc. Now, next, the general classification of our kingdom Animalia. So, our kingdom Animalia are broadly divided into two categories that is, cellular level organism and tissue or organ system level organism. The cellular level organism encompasses the phylum. protifera so basically the protifera are the organisms who have holes in their bodies and are non motile in nature the examples of protifera are various kinds of sponges the next the tissue so and organ system level organism are further divided into two broad categories depending on their body structural symmetry and they are divided into radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry the radial symmetry includes two different phylums that is cnidaria mm, mm, and tinophora so in case of cnidaria the organism has specific cells that is called nidocyte through which they perform their defense mechanism and also they capture their prey and the examples of mm, nidarias are various kinds of hydras and jellyfishes the next is tinophora so these organisms have ciliated comb plate in their body through which they perform their movement and they have uh, bioluminescent characteristics in their bodies and the examples of tinophora are tinoplana and pleurobacteria they are also considered as a tissue level organism the next organ system level organism that is bilateral symmetrical organism or for the divided into three main categories depending on their body cavities and these categories are acelomates pseudocelomates and celomates the acelomates include the phylum platyhelminthes and they are also known as flatworms and in the 
this organism, they don't have any specific circulatory and respiratory systems. Therefore, oxygen and nutrient pass through their body via diffusion mechanism. The examples of natihelminthes are liver flu, tapeworm, etc. Next, pseudocytomates are um, encompasses the phylum um, Ascomanthus or nematodus. They are also known as round worms, and they are basically parasitic in nature, and they have a cylindrical body structure. The examples of nematodes are hookworm, filarius, etc. The next silomet categories are further divided into five different phyla that is Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, and Chordata. So, for Anilida, they are either free living or parasitic organisms, and their body surface are drastically or distinctly marked with being like segments. And the examples of Anilidas are earthworm, which is free living organism and leeches that is parasitic in nature. Next is arthropoda. In this organism, they have hard exoskeletons, jointed legs and segmented bodies. And the examples of arthropodas are butterfly, crabs, spiders, etc. The next is mollusca. So in these cases, the organism have unsegmented body with the spongy or soft layer of skin which is called mantle and some of them have calcareous cells in the body. The examples of molluscs are oysters, snails, squid, octopus etc. The next is echinoderm water. The echinoderms in, or in case of echinoderm organism they have endoskeletons of calcareous ossicles or pits. So therefore, they are also termed as spiny skinned animals. The examples of echinoderms are jellyfish, uh, sorry, starfish, sea cucumber, etc. Next is the phylum chordata. In these cases, organisms have closed circulatory system, central nervous system, notochord, and postural tail. And these categories are further divided into five different classes that is, class physis, class avis, class amphibia, class reptilia, and class mammalia. Now, next come to the my last point the binomial nomenclature system. So, the modern binomial nomenclature system was developed by the Swedish botanist Carl Linus. And this is a formal system of naming a specific organism using their genus name and species names. So there are some rules are obeyed during the binomial nomenclature system. These are the two names are always be in italicized or underlined and the genus name always in capital letter and species name always in lower case and two name always in latinized or in latin form so two different organisms cannot have a similar scientific names and in our world there are various international agencies which regulates and establish the various rules of binomial nomenclature system for example, in case of human being, the scientific name is Homo sapiens, in which Homo depicts their genus name, whereas sapiens depicts their species name. And in case of taxonomic classification of an organism, such as modern human being, it can be written as domain eukaryota, kingdom, animalia, phylum, Chordata, class, mammalia, then order, primates, then family, hominid, then genus, homo, and species is sapiens. So, thank you for listening. Uh, hope you all enjoy this video. If you have any queries, please contact us and all the necessary links are already given in the description box below. And to get more such videos, 
please subscribe this channel. And thank you very much once again and stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye. The Green Thinkers Academy.